So that was shape. But what if you had a distribution that looked something like this? What do you notice about this drawing? Other than my really terrible artistry, of course. For me, it's this little guy out here. I mean, what the heck is going on with that? We've got most of the data over here and it's all bunched up and it's playing nicely. And I could talk about the shape of it and that kind of thing. To me, this is kind of symmetrical. But what's this about? This over here is an outlier. It's a freak of the measurement. Either someone was, you know, really fast compared to everyone else or they got, you know, whatever you're measuring, they got paid a whole lot more than everyone else, something like that. Or the person who was entering the data into a list typed in the wrong thing and put an extra digit in one of them. Either way, this affects the rest of our data. So you need to talk about it when you're describing a distribution. And this is a really easy thing to comment on right away. If you see a picture like this in an exam and they say, talk about this distribution, well, you say the first thing is, oh, hey, look, there's a screaming big outlier right there in the outfield. So that's a distribution with outliers. That one was a histogram. What about a box plot with outliers? Do you remember what that looks like? Something like this, and then a little cross or a dot or a little circle, something like that. That's what an outlier looks on a box plot. And again, describing it, you'd say, well, hey, this bit's roughly symmetrical, but whoa, whoa, screaming outlier out here. What about a stem and leaf plot with an outlier? This is what an outlier on a stem and leaf plot might look like. So if you notice, we've got the bulk of the data bunched up here, and then we've got something way out over here. But to me, this one, it might be an outlier or it might just be an extreme point that fits within the range because it's kind of far away, but it's not so far away as to be ridiculous. So how do you know if it's an outlier or not? Remember that old rule, IQR times 1.5, either side of the Q1 and Q3 points. So you want to know Q3 plus the IQR times 1.5 and you want to know Q1 minus the IQR times 1.5. So in this case, how would we figure out if this point down here, if this sucker is an outlier or not? How do we find the IQR? We need to work out Q3 and Q1 and take them away from each other. So we'll count our way into the middle. 1, 2, 3, 4 from the bottom. 1, 2, 3, 4 from the top. 1 from the bottom, 1 from the top, 1 from the bottom, 1 from the top. That's the median. Now I'll do this here. 1 from the bottom, 1 from the top. One from the bottom, one from the top, one from the bottom, one from the top. Halfway between 23 and 24 is 23.5. And I'll do it on this side to the other side of the six. One from the bottom, one from the top, one from the bottom, one from the top, one from the bottom, one from the top. So I've got 32 and 42 being the numbers. So halfway between 32 and 42 is 37. And if you don't know, just add them together and divide by two. That helps you find halfway between two points. So I've got a Q1 of 23.5 and a Q3 of 37. My IQR is going to be 37 minus 23.5, which is 13.5. Now I want to know the IQR times 1.5. So 13.5 times 1.5 equals 20.25 and now I need to know that either side of Q1 and Q3. So we've got, and I'll just do this in another color over here, Q3 which is uh, 37. So I've got 37 plus 20.25 and I want Q1 which is 23.5 minus this number here, 20.5. 20.25 rather, and I'll get my range that the numbers need to fit within. So 37 plus 20.25 is 57.25, and this one here is 3.25. So anything lower than 3.25, anything higher than 57.25 is an outlier. So let's have a look again. What's this number? 71. Is it higher than 57.25? You betcha. So that definitely is an outlier and that's how you work it out. So that was describing the presence of outliers. Now what if you're asked to describe these two distributions that I've drawn here? What do you notice about these? Other than, again, I can't draw. They're quite different, although they both really have the same shape in a sense. They both have the same skewing, because if I put my pen on the top here, on this peak, and I go wee 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 down the mountain, I'm pointing towards positive numbers. So this one's got a positive skew, 
and it's got no outliers. So those are the first two things I can say about it. This one, I put my pen on the peak of the mountain and I go down the mountain, I'm pointing towards positive numbers. So this has got a positive skew and it's got no outliers. But they're still vastly different, aren't they? What makes them different? It's how spread out they are. Generally, this one is all smooshed up. They're all kind of between here and here and they're not using any of this part of the graph because there are no numbers there if I've drawn these to the same scale. But this one, it's all over the place. It's really spread out. It's covering a lot of distance. So this one probably has a high range because the, the highest point minus the lowest point is going to be quite big. And this one probably has a small range because the highest point minus the lowest point is going to be a smaller number. So the spread is quite different. This one has a large spread and this one has a small spread. And the figure that you use to talk about that measures of spread would be the range or the interquartile range or the standard deviation or the variance if you happen to be, if they've given you one of those stats basically. But largely when you're talking about spread, something like this, I would talk about the range if they ask you to give a relevant stat to back up what you're talking about. And that was spread on a histogram, but again, you can talk about the measure of, of spread or, or how far spread out things are on different types of representations, such as box plots. If I've got two box plots that are on the same scale, and one of them is like this, and let's say they're both, both roughly symmetrical, but the other one's like this. What do you notice about the two? This one's all smooch, smooshed up. It has a small spread, a small range, small IQR. This one is all spread out. It's highly spread. It's got a large range and a large IQR. And what about describing these two back to, this back-to-back -back stem plot? I would say both of these are roughly symmetrical. They're balanced either side and neither of them have any outliers. And yet this one all smooshed up and this one very spread out. So the range of this one is going to be 78 minus, what's that, 11, so that's 67. And the range of this one is going to be 58 minus 32, which is 26. And so you can see just by like looking at those numbers, this one has a range of 67, this one has a range of 26, this one is much more spread out, and this one is much more smooshed up, it has a smaller range. And another thing that you might talk about when you're describing distributions is the center, where the data is centered around. And if you have a look at these three distributions, this is actually the exact same histogram. I've copied and pasted it across three different graphs here. So the layout of the data is exactly the same in terms of its skewness, its presence of outliers. It's just that it's moved up the scale. So here, this is centered around lower numbers. This is centered around numbers in the middle of the scale, and this is centered around higher numbers. So whatever type of data this is, you could comment and say, well, group A is generally all less of whatever it is. You know, if, if the variable is uh, how much they're getting paid, these people are getting paid less, these people are getting paid more, these people are getting paid a heck of a lot. Or if it's, you know, how tall they are, these people are short, these people are middle sized, you know, they're somewhere average, and then these people are all tall. This is the basketball team. If this is, you know, distance that um, you have to travel to get to work, these people all live really close to home. These people all live within a radius of whatever the number is 20 kilometers these people are all commuting from some other town you know maybe they're in Ballarat and commuting to Melbourne something like that so you take your three groups and you say well based on where the data is centered they they have these similarities and differences and here I've drawn three box plots all exactly the same so what can we comment about these so far well they've got a skew let's put our pointer our pen on the hump of the data and go screaming down the hill follow the direction we can go the furthest in this would be right off the cliff but this would be how far can we draw our wiggly arrow we want to go the longer version we're pointing towards negative numbers so this has got a negatively skewed and it's got a little outlier and I've just copied and pasted this this is the same as these they're all the same as each other but what else can I comment about it well if this is group A this is group B and this is group C I can talk about the center. They're all spread the same way, but the center moves each time. And so an, an appropriate statistic, if they say talk about these uh, box plots, using re making reference to an appropriate statistic. If you want to talk about 
the center of them. In this case, I would use the median because I can read the median off. If I have had labeled this scale in an exam, this would be labeled. You can talk about the median for each and how it increases from each group. Um, if they were actually different, you might want to talk about the range and things like that as well. But as a measure of center from a box plot, the, the measure of center that you can read off right away is the median. So when you're describing distributions, the things that you look for, no matter whether it's a histogram, a stem and leaf plot, a box plot, a dot, a dot plot, whatever the distribution is, however it's represented, the things that you look for are the shape, and the shape can be either symmetrical, positively skewed, or negatively skewed. You also look for the presence of outliers and you might make a comment on you know, whether they're a valid piece of data or if they're probably a data entry error, something like that. You'd talk about the spread, how far spread out it is. Is it all clustered up or does it span a big range? And you'd talk about the center. Those are some things to look for when you're describing distributions.